Good afternoon, folks. Uh, I'm Winston Kelly with the NASCAR Hall of Fame, and uh, we're delighted to have three members of the 2014 class of the NASCAR Hall of Fame, and I guess that's uh, pretty appropriate following who I believe is a future Hall of Famer in uh, Waddell Wilson, who deservedly got the uh, Smokey Unic Award. I think these gentlemen don't need any introduction. Of course, uh, Maurice Petty, the chief, who won over 250 races in a, as an engine builder uh, for Petty Enterprises. Dale Jarrett, 32 time winner, 1999 champion, and five time sportsman and Bush Series champion, the Ironman Jack Ingram. So, gentlemen, thanks so much for coming out and uh, spending a few minutes with, with us. Since you've gotten in, and, and let's start, Jack, with you and, and come this way. Since you've been inducted, how have things changed in terms of your phone ringing, the request for interviews? Has it changed a lot? A whole lot. Uh I uh, may have made a mistake. They uh, come and become a nominee, and they'll send you a paper later on. In case you're elected, would you do these things? And I marked them all off, and they've doubled, up, doubled down on me. <laughs> <laughs> when we appreciate it. <laughs> no, I, I, I enjoy doing it. I ain't doing nothing anyway. Thank you. Well. Well, we appreciate it. DJ, I know you're still around and out and about a lot, but, you know, and you're around when your dad got in, of course. But uh, how has it changed for you from your perspective? Yeah, well, I, I think that it's helping me to really understand the magnitude of this. I mean, certainly I was appreciative of the the uh, nomination, at, but being around and, and you know, people I – mean, Every weekend being at the track, you, you run across fans uh, as I'm going back and forth to the booth and, and in the garage area and things uh, that uh, a lot of congratulations and, and, you know, cool things happening. And, you know, there's, the opportunities are out there to, to talk about it. And, and uh, you know, you, you see the sport a little bit from a different side now that, that you're part of this class and, and means a lot to me uh, because it gives me the opportunity to talk about the sport and, and the, the group that I'm going in with. Well, Chief, you've been through it uh, a number of times with so many of the petty folks being in there, especially your dad, Lee, going in. How has it been different now that it's you that's going into the NASCAR Hall of Fame over the last several months? Well, I, my mailbox has been full, and I ain't signed so many autographs in all my life. And so uh, I about got writer's cramp. And any of the rest of these questions, y'all got, y'all ask them to. Don't ask me. <laughs> Uh, they want to hear from you just as much. I okay. I, I thought I was going to tell them that. <laughs> okay. W without divulging a lot of specific secrets, I know you guys have been thinking about it, been meeting with uh, Kevin Schleser, our exhibits director, and, and members of the staff. What are some of the types of things, just one or two maybe things, that uh, you'd like to see in your exhibit at the NASCAR Hall of Fame for fans to know about you that they may not already know. You know, they want they know about the championships, they know about the wins. Uh, Jack, what's something that tells a little bit about the Jack Ingram story or something you've come across that really tells a part of your story? I don't know. Uh, I've won a lot of races around all over the country, and uh, they was basically nothing compared to the first time I won Daytona. I think anybody went to race Daytona was was the late model sports and Bush Grand National Cup race or whatever it's to me it's a big big deal and uh, that's the biggest thing that ever happened to me and I don't know how you could display it they was some uh, wide world of sports did it and they bound to be some film on it. I'd like to see some of that film there okay DJ have you come across something that's kind of unique that yeah, you, you know, obviously we've, we've all been fortunate to have a lot of trophies and things, and there's things that you do run across that kind of got put back a, a little bit. Things from the brickyard that I forgot because they were really special there and, and a lot of things that, that they do. I think some of the other things are more from outside the racing side. They came, obviously, because of uh, the success in NASCAR, but, you know, charitable things and, and being recognized for, for some things that we did uh, with the Susan G. Komen uh, Breast Cancer Foundation uh, during the years and, and being named uh, a couple of times for uh, the NASCAR Man of the Year because of a lot of the things that we were fortunate to do as a, a family and, and as a race team to, to help others. And I think those are a couple of things that we're going to put in there just to, for people to understand not only myself but 
this entire group that how much you do for the communities that we go to and, and help others out. Great point. Chief, how about from your perspective, uh, anything, I'm not going to let you off the hook that easy, that uh, <laughs> something that, that you've come across that tells the story of your career that you think is pretty special, or maybe that your family thinks is special. Well, I only, the only thing I can say that I've not only built a lot of engines for Richard Wynn, but we had other drivers that drove for us, and they won. And uh, I've bet a lot of the late model sportsmen and stocks and drag races and motors and, you know, I, I, and boat motors. I, I've built a little of everything, and I've enjoyed doing that all my life. And I think that's one of the things that, that Richard, every time I've seen him and talking about your induction, it's how many races you won with other people. And I think seven different manufacturers, you won races with seven different manufacturers. And the engines were all different back then. They're not the same uh, like today. They're, they're very similar. Well, you, you better believe things are different because we worked out of a junkyard many a, many a year. And I do remember one thing that, that I ran across that really uh, made me sort of feel good was that when NASCAR said you had to go to the 355 small engine, we, uh, they said you had, and uh, we've been running them old Hemi's and and the big block uh, Chrysler motors, but uh, uh, they had a uh, series, Trans Am series, and they built uh, motors for it for the. Uh, uh, well, I forget what it is, like the Tour, but anyway, and they put special emphasis on the motors, and it was what they called a TA, TA block, and and they didn't have no more of them. And so if you got one of them, you got one of the good blocks and one of the good rods in it. And so we scarfed to the junkyards all over the United States looking for them, and luckily we found a bunch. All right. Questions that uh, folks from the media have for our Hall of Famers. Got a couple of microphones. Kenny, you ought to be up here. You come up with good questions. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. For, for Dale, can you talk about watching those two guys work as you were growing up? Yeah, I, I sure can. And I think that what Winston just brought up and, and Chief just pointed out about everything that he was able to do with a lot less technology than, than what is out here today is just incredible. Uh, the, the drivers, uh, the, the different forms of motorsports that he was able to, to win. But he was someone that, when I was around the racetrack as a kid and watching Chief, he was doing everything. You know, I knew that he was, even then, that he was the man that built the engines, but he did a lot more on the cars and was a part of their success in a lot of different ways. And uh, that I, I learned that early on, and, and I think that's why uh, I understand why he's here is it, because I was able to, to witness that and see that. But you also got to see the other side of them away from the racetrack because we, we stayed at a lot of the same places with the, the Jarrett's and the Petties, and that's when we weren't when they weren't feuding too bad. But uh, you know those were times where a little bit more difficult. But it was a lot of fun to see it. So so I, I'm I'm very appreciative of of the talents that he brought and and why he's here. Uh, I watched Jack Ingram before I had the, the chance to race against him, but it was incredible to, to watch him on a weekly basis to where I could see once I was finished selling popcorn and Cokes and handing out programs at Hickory Speedway, but to, to watch him work on his own vehicles, to, to know them inside and out, and then go on the racetrack and, and perform the way that he did. I, I gained a greater appreciation of that whenever I had the opportunity then to, to race against him and learn a lot from him in a lot of different ways. And uh, he taught me lessons off the track. He taught me a lot of lessons on the track that, that helped me throughout my career. And so um, to, to be here with people that I look at as, as some of my heroes of people that, that I was able to watch, uh, that, that probably is as special as anything about this. Got one over here. Roger Holtzclaw with OnPayRoad.com. Uh, this is for each of you. Uh, throughout, I mean, each of you just got a great, illustrious career, been to a lot of racetracks. Could you tell us what your favorite racetrack was? Chief, favorite racetrack? Remember where you're sitting. <laughs> uh, it wasn't Charlotte. <laughs> I'd have to say Daytona, because uh, we won quite a few of them down there. and. 
Martinsville, Wilkesburg, the short tracks, big tracks, I mean, you know. Heck, uh, a lot of people ask that question, which was your favorite race. A win is your favorite race. The last race that you won, that's your favorite race. And look forward to the next one. Well, the, I uh, was basically a short track racer. Uh, I, Hickory was, uh, at the time I was uh, winning some races over there and some championships, it was the biggest name short track in the country. And uh, there's a lot of people in that Hall of Fame, some going to be in the Hall of Fame that basically raced, started off at Hickory. And uh, when it was dirt and it come asphalt, uh, I started racing for Ned over there and he turned it into asphalt and Ned Jarrett. And the following year I won the track championship there. and. Uh, I also won again in 71, and I'm certainly proud of winning the track. Because you go over and there'd be 25 guys. You're talking about Harry Gant, Butch Lindley, Tommy Houston, just on and on and on. And then these guys would come in from up in Virginia. It was about the toughest place in the world to win a race. I won one race over there as a 300-lap winners-only championship. You'd had to win a NASCAR race in order to win. And they had Bobby and Allison, Donnie Allison, Red Farmer, and Freddie Fryer, and everybody from down in Alabama and Tennessee. And Darrell Waltrip, I got to say this, he come and tried, didn't make the race. <laughs> you have to put that one in your pocket there, DJ. We can use that with old DW. Uh, yeah. How about yours, Dave? Yeah. Yeah. You know, obviously, without Hickory Speedway that Jack's talking about, it, it I, that's where I got started, and you know, I did so many things there. Uh, brings back a lot of memories. But I can name different places. As far as to race, I mean, you wanted to be on the big stages. And, and when I think about it, uh, you know, I was fortunate to, to win at Daytona, Indianapolis, Darlington, and here at Charlotte. And, and this, to me, and not just saying this because of, of, being, of sitting here, but this kind of was the show place, the first place that really – you, everyone looked at from the outside and said, you know, they did so many things here that it kind of set our sport uh, apart and uh, uh, made things happen. So I appreciated that. But, uh, you know, if I had to say a place to, to actually race, it, it would have <laughs> – I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it would have, you know, the, the tougher places to race, and Michigan was one of those, and uh, I, I enjoyed racing there also. Good. Got one over here. Hi, guys. Stan Creekmore with RPM tonight.com um, Dale and Jack this is towards you and I apologize Maurice but for both of you think back to the very very beginning of your racing interest not necessarily your career but what brought you this way and Dale I remember you were going to be a great golfer at one point in your life so what brought you into racing versus anything else well, I, you know, I grew up as a competitor. You know, you always talk about it, race drivers, athletes, whatever. I, I was a competitor. I played a lot of sports, and I loved to compete. And I guess it was whenever, thank goodness, I made that decision that I might not ever get to that level of golf that would take me to where I wanted to go. And racing was something that I'd been around and wanted to try. And that very first time, I knew what being fortunate to be a good enough athlete to have a lot of success going through high school and things and winning a lot of things, winning individual things with golf tournaments and things, there was nothing that thrilled me more than finishing ninth that first night at Hickory Speedway in a limited sportsman race. And I remember going up and telling my dad, I found what I'm – this is it. You know, this, there's nothing like the competition there. And that's what I wanted to do. And it was for 31 years then, it was like that every time that I got behind the wheel. I just love to compete. And there's, there's no better form of competing than, than doing this in motorsports and in the top level of motorsports. Well, gentlemen, I know you got uh, a lot going on. And thanks for taking the time to come out here. Remind folks, uh, January the 29th, our induction dinner and induction ceremony for the 2014 class. We'll unveil their exhibits on January the 30th. If you didn't see it this morning, we started uh, talking about the new Glory Road, which are the 18 cars that lead from our second to our third level. We're going to totally change those out the first week in January, uh, and we'll be unveiling some of those cars in the weeks ahead. We just announced this morning that Buck Baker's 1957 Black Widow Chevrolet, the actual car that he raced in 1957, is one of those 18. So uh, we're thrilled about that. So pay attention to all of our social media and, and outlets coming up. 
Thanks for your time. And gentlemen, again, congratulations. Looking forward to the big induction week, uh, January the 29th.